change is something that's never easy to embrace or navigate around. However, it is essential, an essential part of anyone's life, and especially in the healthcare system, for us to be able to deliver the best experience and service to our patients, as well as for everyone to achieve the best outcomes in healthcare. Now, my last couple of videos spoke about how uh, there are challenges that we face at the moment in terms of providing the best care for our patients who go through menopause and perimenopause, the reasons behind it, and also the reasons why the treatment is not as up to par as we would like it to be. So I'm going to finish up in this, uh, this series with this video where we're going to talk about some solutions and some changes that are really, really uh, well warranted in the space of providing the best uh, patient experience to our patients who are undergoing menopause or perimenopause at the moment. So to learn more, stay tuned for the rest of the video. What is up everyone? Welcome back all to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Shweta. I am the founder and lead coach of Healthy Dynamics. We are a coaching practice that helps healthcare professionals from non-English speaking countries improve both their language as well as communication skills in order to achieve the best sort of relationship that they can have with their patients that is founded on trust and credibility, as well as being able to deliver the best experience with their patients that will get them more referrals as well as uh, be standing out as a person of excellence in their workplace. So as you can probably see here from before how I'm dressed, I'm back in Melbourne. I'm back in the place where I'm currently dog sitting. Uh, so it's right in the middle, the heart of the city. So uh, I have to admit, I do miss Bali. I got back from Bali uh, just over a week or about two weeks ago, and I really miss it. And uh, I'm sort of uh, thinking about making it a destination that I would like to visit annually at this point, because obviously now I have uh, Lydia who lives there and works, uh, lives there and you know, she, uh, she and I have been working together for two years. And even she suggested if, she'd, if I'd like to do this on an annual um, basis and I already took up her offer on it. So you never know, uh, in the future there might be some videos that uh, may be shot in Bali for this channel uh, on an ongoing basis. Uh, but yeah, there's no place like home, obviously, so I'm very happy to be back. But yes, obviously, Bali obviously has got a piece of my heart now, and it's a place that not only would I like to go back to, it's quite easy to go back to as well for people who live in Australia. Like if you live in the western side, which is in the western Australian state, you uh, it's only a three-hour flight. And in, in many cases, it's actually cheaper for people to fly to Bali than it is to other parts of the country. Anyway, moving on from Bali and back to the reality of what is going on with patients who experience menopause and perimenopause. So my last two videos looked into the reasons why this particular uh, sector in healthcare is very much in the shambles at the moment and uh, what the reasons behind it is. And it really, comes it really comes down to the lack of adequate, not only knowledge and awareness about menopause, but also there's a lot of work to be done on the systemic level to really bridge that gap of communication, remove the stigma, and also have a much more open dialogue and discussion for what is considered a very, very normal part of life, a very natural and normal part of, part of a change of life, as we call it. So in this particular video, I'm going to be focusing on what we as healthcare professionals on an individual or a team level can do on a regular basis, incorporate some changes in our life and in our practice on a regular basis in order for us to make the experience of navigating through menopause for our patients a much more not only pleasant but also positive and empowering one where they feel supported and not stigmatized or judged for going through the change of life for them. So again, I'm just going to go through certain uh, aspects of where I feel changes obviously are to be made on a systemic and on a big picture macro level. Uh, and there's no doubt that that's going to take you know, quite a lot of time. That's going to take quite a lot of um, uh, you know, policy making change and also on a federal like government level, that's the, you know, and we're not going to go there because that's a little quite really out of our hands. But we are going to talk about what we can do on an individual and team level as healthcare providers in order to change our approach towards menopause and to be able to provide our patients with the best care and experience. Well, let's just get into it. So the number one big change that we can all 
uh, incorporate as healthcare providers in order to provide our menopausal and perimenopausal patients the best possible care and experience is by really being aware of our biases and our prejudices that obviously have come to us on an unconscious implicit level and really work intensively on breaking them down and sort of overcoming them. Now, I have to say this doesn't happen overnight, number one, and also this does not happen in isolation. So that's why nowadays we have, why coaching is such a big and lucrative and on-demand industry, because these sort of changes have to really take place from a psyche subconscious level. So Biases are generally, as if you would have seen my previous videos and my posts on LinkedIn, biases are something that we are indoctrinated into and they're embedded into us from a very young age through a lot of factors. So and that sort of becomes like an imprint or a part of our blueprint as uh, individuals and as humans. However, it is possible to overcome them. Is it, it is possible to have that change and transformation, though it will take time. I mean, I don't want to give you a time frame they normally say that to overcome a habit, it takes anywhere up to 66 to 90 days if you apply the, the tools and practices on a consistent basis. And again, I don't really know what the time frame would be in terms of overcoming a bias. And I would highly recommend working with someone who's a bit more experienced in changing the programming, wiring, and the chemistry of your brain in order to have a more open-minded approach so that we can... Uh, sort of really overcome these biases that are holding us back in not only putting our patients into boxes and judging them and gaslighting them, which we don't intend to do, but our biases are making us do it, but also being able to see them as individuals with their with unique needs, unique conditions, unique personalities and unique body types, and treat them on a personalized level and treat them more as humans. And this is where coaches like myself or anyone that you can think of can be a uh, very, very valuable source of support and resource. Now, this is something that I do work with uh, uh, on my clients about, so we do actually explore what are some of the things that that have shaped the way in which we communicate uh, you know from our childhood experiences from our culture from our religion and all those things and how we sort of navigate on working through them so if you can find something similar or even do your own research or some or some sort of resources there's plenty of them online that makes you aware and identify what your core biases are that have been embedded into you on a subconscious level and how you can overcome them in a coherent, sort of congruent and a more systematic, methodical manner. So that's number one. Number two would be to collaborate with more experienced and skilled colleagues in the field of menopause and learn from them. So obviously, as I mentioned in my previous videos, menopause is still an area of healthcare where there are no real specialized um, doctors or healthcare providers who work specifically on menopause. Like, as I mentioned previously, we have healthcare providers for every part of the body, of the human body and every system. And even for animals, for example, we have a, a, a healthcare providers who specialize in that. However, only in the last few years where menopause has really emerged as a different area of study, is why there is a need now for people who specialize in it. Now, that obviously, there's no real system uh, at this point or any sort of education or qualification at this point that will make you, you know, a qualified professional in the field of menopause. So obviously there might be some sort of changes happening in that, in that field. But in the meantime, what you can do is really work together with your colleagues who are more knowledgeable and more experienced and more skilled in the area of menopause and perimenopause. Say, for example, you might be a nurse who is working with, or a midwife who is working with patients who are, who have undergone, um, you know, quite a few pregnancies and uh, any other sort of health conditions, and uh, they are coming to you and get needing guidance and advice on how they can navigate through this change of life. Now, you may not have all the answers, but you can obviously refer them on to someone who's more experienced and knowledgeable. However, to really build that connection and the trust with your patient, it's very important that you work with your colleagues who are more experienced and knowledgeable and get the training and support and guidance from them. This also applies for when you are a GP. So sometimes when you have um, patients who, are, who immediately go through menopause or going through any sort of conditions, the first resort is almost always GPs. And GPs really have 
there's a big need for GPs to really familiarize themselves and educate themselves on what actually happens to the f uh, female anatomy and the hormonal changes and the physiology when menopause uh, overtakes them and how we can uh, sort of navigate them. And that's very important that when you're more knowledgeable and more aware as a GP about these conditions and also how to communicate effectively about it to your patients, it will just build that trust and credibility a lot more and it, you will also be able to give your patients the best experience and care that they deserve. Number three, I would say is observe colleagues who are undergoing this change of life. So your personal colleagues who are undergoing menopause and perimenopause and really ask them on not really a professional level, but also a human level, what they actually need from them. So obviously, you know, you may not know a lot about menopause and even if say, especially if you're say of the you are you don't identify yourself as a as a female, and you know so your knowledge may not be as good as any as everyone else's. And you you obviously are not going to experience this firsthand. However, if you know of colleagues who have or are undergoing menopause, it's always a good thing to ask them firsthand, only if they're comfortable sharing um, what sort of symptoms they have experienced, uh, how they are navigating through this journey, what kind of care they're receiving, where they feel that the gaps are, and also what you, not just on a professional level, but also as a trusted colleague and as a well-wisher and even a friend or a, a supporter, what you can do for them. So this way you can actually really get an understanding on a very human level, on a very basic human level, what they experience and what get a sense really from the horse's mouth on what a patient really needs without going into the whole, going into the other dimension of the medical care and the healthcare side of it, just on a pure basic one-to-one -one human interaction level when you're trying to make a connection. Like we have days like in Australia, we have a day called Are You Okay Day where you have, you are, it's a good thing to ask everyone if they're feeling okay to talk about, to remove the stigma about mental health. We should we do something similar to remove the stigma around um, menopause. And this actually segues very well into the next thing that we should do. And Bear in mind that this is this has to be more on a systemic level and on a broader macro level rather than an individual level, but it's never too late or never impossible really to start. This the time. next one I would say is really changing the dialogue around menopause on a workplace level. Now, in a lot of workplaces in a, nowadays, because of the awareness that has we've come, we've come about and learned about, uh, a lot of workplaces now are advocating for women to actually uh, have leave on um, uh, days that they experience quite severe symptoms of menopause. And also workplaces are having a more, a bigger dialogue about what menopause actually is and how it affects women at different stages of their life. So if you remember, I spoke about Shelley Horton and some of the other doctors of menopause. They are making a very conscious effort to actually go into workplaces and train um, workplaces that are not just in healthcare, but in uh, all sort of fields of uh, uh, corporate life. And these people are actually going on and training uh, healthcare providers, not just healthcare providers, but also other organizations on what menopause is and how colleagues and um, management can best support their colleagues when they're undergoing um, this sort of change of life. And really on a one-on-one -on -one, uh, human level, again, uh, just like how I'm just drawing parallels now between the stigma that was once associated with talking about mental health. Now, that stigma around menopause is still very much prevalent, unfortunately, and really we should be working towards removing that stigma and having a more, not only open dialogue, but also an educational approach when we're speaking to our colleagues about, about this change of life and about this condition. So, uh, as I said previously, you know, having uh, conversations with colleagues uh, on a human level, that's one thing, but also I guess suggesting to people on a, a much higher up level in, in your workplace about having more training sessions, having something to raise more awareness about menopause on a, on a generic level, and then just having that transformation on, a, on an educational level across the board in the workplace, just so that people can actually feel that this is a place where I will feel supported. So whether it's with your patients, they will feel supported because the organization understands exactly what menopause is, what it entails, what patients go through as a result of it, and what treatments would be the best way, and what, how, we, how they can provide the best care and support for these patients. 
The next one definitely, and this again is on a systemic level, but we can obviously incorporate that as uh, individuals who work in healthcare and one-on-one -on -one with our patients, is accurate testing to be done prior to diagnosis and providing more personalized treatment. So in the very first video that I filmed and I, um, on this channel that I spoke about on menopause, one of the other reasons why uh, menopause is so, has been so severely misunderstood traditionally is because obviously there's the whole stigma around it, but also because what uh, healthcare providers generally tend to do is instead of um, sort of really working together with the patient and asking them whether it's a good idea to do this type of test or that type of test and really getting to the bottom or the root cause of what it is that, that is leading to these experiences of their symptoms. And also customizing and personalizing treatment that you or support that they, are, they will require or the care that, will, that they will be required. That is beyond just antidepressants and HRT. So on a more holistic and natural level is what we should all be aiming towards. So yeah, so instead of jumping to conclusions and gaslighting and uh, judging patients, we should really be asking questions that get us to not only identify the symptoms, but also work towards how can we do more accurate testing so that we know what the root causes and sort of eradicate the problem at a grassroots. And finally, and this is indispensable regardless of which uh, ever interaction that you have with your patient as a healthcare provider in any condition, but it's just as important when you're working with patients who go through menopause, and that is to master the core skills of empathy, active listening, and also simplification of the language with which you are communicating with your patients. Now, my channel, obviously, and all my content and my coaching is all about these core skills of of active listening and empathy and everything else, and also being aware of the uh, cultural differences that we have um, amongst our patient cohort and how we can approach uh, the, the topic of menopause with them without making it seem an awkward and uncomfortable experience for that. So definitely getting the hang of how to do these in a more effective manner. And also when you're explaining uh, symptoms and what menopause actually is, and also recommending or suggesting treatment options, keep the language very simple and easy to understand and also always clarify with the patient if they are, they've understood what you've said to them, be open to questions and also always be open to feedback. And um, in, the, in the very beginning, like I, like I mentioned, we talk about, talked about how we have biases that uh, sort of dictate how we interact with our patients. We have to sort of minimize that so that we get rid of, or again, minimize the um, concept of gaslighting, which we medical professionals do tend to do when we are undergoing this and many other conditions. So yeah, that sort of wraps up our video series on menopause and how we can provide menopausal patients the best care that is available as healthcare providers. Uh, stay tuned for, now I'm going to be doing weekly themed videos. Uh, on a regular basis, so uh, I'm going to be talking about next week what frame of reference is and many, many other things. So lots of ex exciting things coming up on the channel as well as my monthly interviews. So definitely stay tuned for those and watch those. And as always, if you like what you hear and see here, make sure that you hit the like and subscribe button and the notification bell. And thank you very, very much for your time, attention and presence and I will see you next week. See ya, bye bye.